today I'm going to cover uh, the latest trends in content marketing, how to break through the noise and let your message be heard, why your content should match buyer personas, what content resonates with potential customers, how to expand the reach of content beyond your own network. First, I'm going to discuss the latest trends in content marketing. According to the Content Marketing Institute, 92% of marketers are currently using content marketing in their marketing strategy, with 58% of business-to-business and 60% of business consumers planning to boost that budget as the years move forward. Additionally, content-specific jobs are being created. We're seeing chief content officers, content strategers, content managers, jobs that are specifically created to deal with the content for a company. We see that internet sales are moving heavily towards mobile and that companies are gearing content towards mobile devices. And we know that there is no more gaming the system when it comes to SEO. Algorithms have been set by Google and Bing and other search engines to look for high quality content and to rank that content higher. There, the days are gone when people can trick the system into getting best, better SEO results and content is king. Additionally, the competition for content quality has intensified and more and more companies recognize the need for high quality content. So it's important to have a good content marketing strategy in place. So what does all that mean for brands? It means that brands need to think like journalists and stay on top of trends. They need to understand what's going on and what's being written about their industry and make sure that they become thought leaders by producing good, high-quality, relevant content for their audience. And also, we know that responsive mobile website is a must-have. It is no longer acceptable to customers to go use their mobile device to find your website and get a, a, a website that's not usable on, a website, on their phone. Also, content must stand out. Links have to be earned. Uh, the algorithms for Google more and more are picking up when you're just putting out content with links back to your site and that the content isn't high quality. Content that is high quality stands out because people read it, they stay on it, they comment, they engage with it, and they share it. And more and more the search engines are recognizing this pattern. Finally, highly targeted content is also expected from web users. They don't want to see content that's not relevant to them. And brands must be storytellers now and answer the questions of why. So they, they need to start educating their industry in areas concerning their products and services without talking specifically about this. And I'll cover that a little bit more. So matching content to buyer personas is extremely important. Why? Because the web is personalized to you. You see ads that are personalized to your history. If I was searching on shoes yesterday, but I didn't buy those shoes, and now I log into my Facebook account, I might see that those shoes are magically flashing at me to the side. My social media is personalized to my likes and interests. I can see what my friends like. I can see what they're interested in. I can see what they're doing. So content also needs to be personalized for my needs. So if I'm a frequent business traveler, for example, my needs for business travel are going to be much different than the family travelers that are traveling with kids. I'm probably traveling during the week. I need to get to my destination within working business hours, and I want to be able to get back on Friday afternoon so I can have the weekend with my family. If I'm a family traveler, the needs are much different. I need, I'm need. i concerned about what kind of food they have, what kind of hours they have, and when I'm going to be able to get to my destination to maximize my time. So it's important to look at your different buyer personas and make content that speaks to them specifically. That's important because people read content at different stages of the buying cycle. There's the education or brand awareness cycle, the qualification stage, and the, and the purchase stage. So what this means is that if I'm a person looking and I think I might need to go on a vacation. Now I'm in the education phase. I'm starting to read blogs. I'm looking out on social media, trying to find out where is the best place for me to go on vacation. During this process, I am researching on the web, and I might come across some branded content that talks to me about travel tips from Hilton about traveling with kids. 
so that I might cl click on the Hilton website, and now I'm in the qualification stage. This is where I start to read reviews. I start to look at other people's experiences with that hotel, and I might be deciding where to book. The stage that I decide to book, I'm now in the purchase phase, and that's where I'm going to find product information. I'm going to find out if there's a coffee maker in the room, if they have child care on site. So it's important for companies to have content for all of their buyer personas through every stage of the content funnel. So when you do that, how do you know what content is going to resonate with your customers? The first thing you do is get to the basics. Do research and testing. Research starts with looking for keyword trends in your industry. If we go back to the travel example, what are people searching for? Best places to travel with the family? Best airlines for business travel? travelers? Are they looking for cheap airlines for discount travel? Understand what people are searching for and then you can make content that's relevant to their search. If they want to know, for example, best places to travel with a family, maybe your company puts out information about specific stories about travel in different locations and give them tips about how they might enjoy those locations best with their family, with small children, and so forth. Take a look at which blog posts have the most views and shares. Look back to your previous content. Understand by using analytics tools like Google Analytics which blog posts have the most views and shares. Once you understand the content that's resonating with your audience, you can have a little bit more direction about what kind of content you should create in the future. You can also look to industry conferences to find out popular topics. Oftentimes, you'll see that industry conferences have keynote speakers, they have a lot of different breakout sessions, and they have topics on a variety of subjects. You can also incorporate those subjects into your content for your company. Another way to do research and testing is to look at social signals. What kind of content is being shared in your network? Are people engaging with your content by sharing it? Are they liking it? Are they retweeting? Are they pinning your content on Pinterest? Are they commenting in the comment section of your blog? And if they are, take a look at where they're sharing and how often they're sharing and what they're commenting about so that you know where to gear your content. Finally, you want to do research and testing through analytics. Again, tools like Google Analytics tell you what content types are yielding the most clicks, impressions, views, and conversions. You can tell by using and setting up Google Analytics code on all of your website pages, exactly where your visitors are coming from and exactly what they're doing after they've read your content. If they're going immediately to a buy from after reading your content, it's a good indication that content like that is good for you to have. So what's new and substantial? Becoming the go-to resource. The goal of content marketing is to create content that engages customers and brings them to buy your product. That doesn't always mean that it's an advertisement for your product. You want to stand out from the crowd by being the go-to resource. So a good example of this is a company like PetMD. They have all kinds of articles published on pet health that don't necessarily sell any products. They're specifically talking about the well-being of animals, and it's a resource that people can go to to understand relevant information. Because of that, they have a very high functional content marketing strategy, where people are going there not to buy products and services, but because they are thought of as the industry leaders. Then when they buy products and services, after that, the content has achieved its goal. So it's important for businesses to build trust by staying up to date with industry news and, and publishing consistently good content that is relevant to industry news. Do deep dives. Put time and effort into your content. Don't, don't just put out content just to put it out there, but make sure that the content matches to a buyer persona. persona. If your buyer is that that mom looking to travel with her children, make sure that you have content that she's going to care about. Understanding travel tips with children was one example. Understanding how to eat out if you have children with allergies. Understanding the best ways to pack a bag for convenient travel. Those types of things are interesting, and because of that, that reader is going to find that content and build trust with your brand. 
you want to be a storyteller. People don't generally like to read stories that are straight advertisements or talking all about the products and features that you offer. They want to hear about information that's relevant to them. They don't want to hear information all about you. So it's important to understand what your buyers need, what, what they are interested in learning about, and creating content that's going to be relevant to them. Always do testing to see which content your audience likes. You can use analytics tools, as we discussed before, and take a look at the social signal. You also need to realize that you are the expert of your business. Quite often, people don't re recognize the expertise that they have within their own industry because they're so immersed in it that they forget that, not, that even the basics of their business are sometimes confusing or new to other people. So it's important to create content that covers the basics all the way up to the expert level so that you're covering every stage. So how does all that content fit together? You can create content on the same subject in various forms. You can create content that is repurposed or reused. You can link your content together, and you can have consistent content across all of your platforms. So a great example of this is that, back to that travel example. I am, let's say I'm a hotel, and I'm wanting to advertise my hotel rooms and get travelers to come to it. So I recognize that I have family travelers and I have business travelers. So I want to make sure that I create content for family and content for business. I also want to make sure that I tell a story when I'm creating that content and then I take that content and publish it across many platforms. So if I recognize that I have family travelers, I might decide that I want to create some videos about how to pack for family travel. I also want to create some blog posts about uh, fun things to do in the area for children under five. Then I also want to make sure that I have reviews on my website from people that have traveled with children under five. From there, I can post that content across a variety of channels, including my website and any of my social media properties like YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. I can then lead them to additional content that I have. Once they've read one blog post, for example, I could say find out more by checking out our video about how to pack for a family vacation. So once you've got all that great content and you understand how it fits together and you understand how it reaches your buyer, you want to expand that content's reach. You can do strategies like content seeding. You can spread your content across multiple networks. You can target influencers. Influencers are people that have influence through social media or traditional media. That could be people with a lot of followers to their blog, a lot of followers on their Twitter account, or uh, an industry analyst that's influential in getting people to buy. So you want to make sure that you send your content to them so that if they decide to talk about it, you have the benefit of targeting the audience that they have already built. You can also seed your content in groups and forums. A great place to do that is on LinkedIn. If you've got great articles and videos, you can go to LinkedIn groups and find out groups that are relevant to your industry and post that information there. LinkedIn will then send out an email to all the members of their group letting them know about the content that you posted. You can also reach out in a traditional PR fashion to journalists, magazines, and industry analysts, and you can tell them about your content in the hopes that they will pick it up and create a story about it. You can also ask your customers for recommendations and shares. So if someone has come to stay at your hotel, make it easy for them to write a review. Send them an email thanking them for staying and write a review after they're done. The more content you have, the more likely it will be to be viral. Another thing you can do to spread your content is email marketing. All of that content that you have been creating is great fodder for newsletters or emails. Buyer persona content fits into lead nurturing, and you can create collateral for salespeople as a conversation starter. So what I mean by that is that you have a database of people that you're interested in selling to, and you can send them emails with all that content that you've been creating. So you can send an email saying, hey, we got a great blog post about 
tip, travel tips for travel, for travel with children under five. And then in a following newspaper, you can say, now check out our great video on packing for a family vacation. Once you know who your customers are, you consistently nurture those, con those people by sending them content that's interesting to them. You're not telling them to buy your products and services. You're sending them content that you think will actually be helpful to them. Additionally, this provides collateral for your salespeople, and they have conversation starters. So how does TextBroker fit into this? TextBroker has a network of over 100,000 US-based freelance authors. They are skilled at creating unique content that includes the targeted keywords that you have picked out. They know how to create headline structures and links that boost your SEO. And they also have content strategists on hand that can help you understand how to build a good content strategy. So they can help you come up with blog posts, with social media posts. They can actually create your uh, content like ebooks, white papers, and blog posts for you. And you can package those as part of your overall content marketing strategy. Text broker clients request text-based content geared towards keywords. They give authors suggestions and topics for articles. They follow a proven keyword formula. And text broker authors provide you with fresh, well-written content that is edited by in-house staff. The writers are paid and graded by their writing quality and client feedback, and writing resources are available to them for improvement. There is easy to follow client proposals and easy ways for you to submit topics. So you can order as much content as you like so that you can apply this to your content strategy. So what are the next steps for you? The next step are to make sure that you list out all of your buyer personas. Understand what kind of content you have for each one of those buyers and where they are in the content stage. And if you want to make sure that for every buyer persona, you also have content for that person for every stage of the buying cycle. So you have educational materials, you have qualification materials, and you have product information. Find out what your customers want to know. Ask them. Uh, ask them in surveys. Ask them in emails. Ask them to submit it on your website. Break through the noise by thinking like a journalist and get the results of a professional marketer. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, you can submit them to us at my email, which is listed below. Or you can go anytime to textworker.com, and we will get back to you with as much information as you need. Thank you so much. Hey, Jennifer. <clears throat> yes? Uh, we actually have a few questions. OK, great. Okay, one is uh, someone wanted to know about the average budget for small business owners. Uh, someone who's kind of on a tighter budget, let's say, but uh, would really want to start doing content marketing and wants to know generally what they should start spending. That's a really difficult question to ask without knowing what your total revenue is and your actual business model. Some companies can spend more if they have uh, a lower purchase price and they're able to get a, a conversion right away. So a good example of that would be to spend money on AdWords and then people would click on the ad and be able to purchase the product right away. Other companies might have a budget for AdWords, they click on an ad, but then it's a year-long sales cycle for them to actually be able to purchase products. So that's kind of a difficult question. I think um, you can look at marketingsherpa.com, and there's some formulas on there that can help you determine for your own business. Uh, hopefully, that will help answer your question. Uh, otherwise, you can send me a direct question. If you want to talk specific numbers, I'm happy to uh, give you a recommendation. Uh, another person had a question on um, how to measure success metrics when you're doing content marketing. That's a great question. A good way to measure success is by using Google Analytics. So make sure that you have tracking code in every piece of content that you put out there. And Google will let you know where content came from, uh, actually how many people are engaging with that content and clicking on the links within that content, and where they go from there on your website. Great. And uh, I think this is the final question. Uh, how do they geo-target uh, content if they just have a, a single web page and they're trying to um, 
reach people from different areas, but still have relevant content to, um, I guess, targeted areas. One way to do that is if you're I'm assuming this question is not meaning advertising. You can do geotargeting through uh, advertising platforms, but I think if you're looking to do organically, you want to include keywords that actually are relevant to that geo. So if you're looking for hotels in Cleveland, for example, you would want your content to have that in the keywords, making sure that hotels in Cleveland is in your metadata, hotels in Cleveland is in your title, and hotels in Cleveland is also listed in your um, specific content inside the blog post or whatever it is you're creating. And you could also share that with geo-targeted groups as we talked about doing some sharing. There are lots of different groups where you, like Craigslist or other places that you can do some geo-targeting. Okay, well if that's all, I thank you everybody for attending the webinar.